fundamental rights agency is a very vital and important organ in the EU that we do not always take adequate note of. Because fundamental rights is something that the EU is established for. And this is something that we still lack quite a lot of tools. As we know, constitutional rights are applicable on member states only there where the EU regulation exists. What we need <clears throat> is this kind of a, uh, a new approach where we uh, gradually, with anti-discrimination directive, actually extend the competencies of EU and of course then on the fundamental rights agency to all fields of the life. One step on this direction and important work what the uh, institution agency has been doing are of course the rights of disabled people. We just had in the parliament last autumn under the EPA the uh, Accessibility Act that would be very vital and important step forward on fundamental rights, constitutional rights. The one step that I would like to take is that kind of a sort of a crucial uh, basic uh, notions that we should always remember. Firstly, that means the fact that fundamental rights are inherent and subjective. You can't, not even yourself, give them away. Plus, then no one can then take them away from you. They are always belonging to a person. Secondly, it is a universal concept, and you can't actually decide in member state level or regional level or municipal level to discriminate some people because of their disability, their race, color, religion, or ethnicity or whatever gender, sexual preferences. And we need a strong EU institution and legislation to defend for that. And the third very important aspect is that the constitutional rights can happen only with this kind of a positive actions where you enable the rights for everybody. And as we know, for disabled meaning, uh, disabled people, this doesn't mean that, okay, this is a library with uh, 100 or 500 steps, and if you can't walk, pity for you. It means that you build and construct, construct uh, elevators or other means where uh, people with difficulties to move can enter. You construct that kind of a facilities that uh, facilitate people with problems on their vision or hearing to actually move on the cities and so on. And this aspect is vital. And by the way, I feel very strongly that uh, memory uh, uh, disabling diseases are a disability. You can have a cognitive disability for various reasons and memory disabling diseases like Alzheimer's is one. And you can have uh, visual impairment, hearing impairment, or then a disability in your flexibility and movement. All these are disabilities. And we are, have the obligation, we are obli obliged to plan in, in physical planning and in service planning our society so that you can function as a citizen and you are served as a citizen in this uh, uh, environments, even though you would have some or multiple disabilities. And this goes very much hand in hand, and I really appreciate very highly this newest uh, 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 study and the topic of this seminar about uh, deinstitutionalizing of disabled people. Because, of course, then you need to institutionalize people if you, they, they don't have education, if they don't have financial services, if uh, physical environments to move uh, are very difficult, if you don't have social services, health services, other services brought to home, if you haven't built that kind of a, a social living or cohabitations or service uh, 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 living models where people could live outside the institutions. And then you could also, uh, always, of course, say that, okay, this is because of the benefit of these people. 
you can't let these people out wandering and out on the cold without services or locked on their houses. And this is not true. The truth is we have to plan the living, the housing, the cities and the social palette so that the vast majority of the people can be deinstitutionalized, can live a normal life, go to a normal school, go to normal services, enjoy the culture, enjoy the nature, and enjoy the social life with different kind of a people. And this is the trick, and this is the challenge. Firstly, it is about the respect of the constitutional and human rights that prevents us. Then it is the false belief systems and the history and our institutionalized uh, cultures. Thirdly, not hearing and planning the services and living uh, arrangements with the people of the disability. So you are planning from above to someone else and that usually doesn't function. And of course, that then you are so used with the old, uh, uh, old fashioned structures. And what you need is new value, respect, hear and empower and co-create with disabled people. Think what positive measures are needed so that uh, this uh, service uh, uh, helped and service uh, enabled housing can, can provide so that people can be de institutionalized even if they would be in institutions at the moment. And much further uh, in the future, everybody has a right to as far as possible independent life on their own choices and on their own ho home. And it is our responsibility to guarantee that, provide the services and with co-creating with these people to create that kind of environments and services that it is possible. I hope that you continue this work and uh, bring very much uh, up to the light your, your research, your foundings and uh, your vision for better, more rights-respecting uh, attitude in Europe.